The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast, but they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the thoroughfares and invite to the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. He said to them, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and cast him into the outer darkness. Their men will weep and gnash their teeth, for many are called, few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, these days we have been hearing, especially these Sundays, we are listening to all eschatological parables. An eschatological parable is where we are comparing or we are given a look into the final times or the last judgment and what is going to happen to those people who are responding to God's call and who do not respond to God's call. Now in today's first reading and today's gospel, we are given a glimpse of a wedding feast. This is not a normal wedding feast. You know, when we hear about wedding feast, we compare it to the normal feast that we attend, you know, day in and day out for the weddings and christenings and all those things. No, this is not a normal feast. This is a royal feast of a king, the royal feast of the wedding of his son. So you can imagine the quality of the feast, the quality of the dinner and the quality of the items that are being kept ready for those who are invited. Uh, let's say for example, suppose you were invited to a wedding feast, someone maybe uh, of the president's son. Or maybe you are invited to the British royal family's wedding feast. You know how important and how highly honored that is. No one in normal mind would say, no, I can't come. You know, you make all possibilities to somehow make it there. Because you know how valuable and how honorable that is. Now look at what we find in today's first reading. In Isaiah chapter 25, we are given a glimpse into an extraordinary feast. A very great feast. And this is called a messianic feast. Why? Because the people of Israel always thought the Messiah would come and establish an age of salvation where they will experience something similar to a wedding feast or a great feast where they are full of joy and prosperity and abundance. So this is how an age of salvation is going to be. So they were expecting that Messiah would come and they will have an experience similar to that of a feast. Now what is so much standing out? What is so much extraordinary about this feast? First and foremost, everybody is invited. Everybody is invited. It is, is a universal feast. No one is kept out. No one is, you know, given say, you cannot come, only you can come, only certain people can come. No. Prophet Isaiah say this feast is universal. And let me remind you, this is one of the first phase of the church. First quality of the church. The church is Catholic. Which means the church is universal. Anyone can enter. 
everybody is invited and second thing this feast is sacrificial this feast is sacrificial a uh, fat lamb is killed and you know the lamb is compared to the lamb of christ who sacrificed for us and again in the book of revelation we see the wedding feast of the lamb so this feast is universal and this feast is sacrificial and finally this feast is salvific or supernatural because through this feast death is swallowed up through this feast death is destroyed so this feast is very extraordinary feast now think about those people who were invited how dare they reject such a beautiful invitation to a beautiful wedding feast now suppose you invite somebody to a feast or to a gathering that you organize and you invite people and they say no 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 i can't be bothered you know these are silly things i won't come when someone rejects you or ignores your invitation insults your invitation they are directly ignoring or rejecting or insulting the one who invited at the same way the king who is laying out the dinner the feast is god the bridegroom is son christ and the dinner is a heavenly banquet or the eternal life now let's keep it at that point and my dear friends in christ jesus everyone who rejects a call to be part of the kingdom of god rejects god and everyone who rejects the invitation to be part of the kingdom of god is sentencing themselves into death is saying i do not want salvation i do not want to be part of the kingdom of god i choose to die i choose to remain in hell now this is where it matters invitation is for everyone but the choice to accept this invitation and to be part of the god's kingdom is up to each person it's your choice you are given a free invitation you are given a choice do you want to be a part of the kingdom of god do you want to be a part of the wedding feast of the lamb and you can choose to say yes or no you can decide where do you want to accept god or where do you want to reject god now my dear friends in christ jesus and today at this moment as you are entering into this holy eucharistic celebration this is a foreshadow of that dinner feast that wedding feast every holy eucharistic celebration is that invitation from god to take part in his feast and this eucharist is a wedding feast of the lamb the sacrificial feast of the lamb the salvific feast of jesus that he is offering to us for our salvation and the way you conduct yourself in the mass the way you come for the mass the way you respond to the holy eucharistic celebration are you always late for the feast do you come unprepared for the feast do you come you know unworthy or you do you come as a person who have no regard for the sanctity of the feast now it's quite interesting to see because you know always no one would go after people who reject their invitation and burn their cities and so on so we all know this is not an ordinary feast again there is a person who is taking part in the feast who is not in a wedding garment now this may be out of context for us but for a royal feast conducted in the jewish tradition what happens every person is given the garment they just have to change their clothes change their outer garments and just change into the wedding garment already kept for them the wedding garment is provided by the host they don't have to pay for it they don't have to work for it it is given all you have to do is change your old cloth change your outer garments and change yourself into the wedding garment everybody did that except for one person now the king the host is asking my dear friend how did you get in here without the wedding garment and let me ask you what is this wedding garment this is holiness and righteousness the wedding garment that you have to have to enter into the presence of god to be part of his great feast is holiness and righteousness 
if you look into the letter to hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 it says no one can see god without holiness no one can see god without being holy because god the almighty is holy you have to be holy to be in the presence of god if you are not if your garment is soiled if your garment is dirty you will be kept in the laundry and where is the laundry we know that's purgatory and dear friends in ephesians chapter 5 st paul is comparing the church to this bride and says the church is sanctified so that she can enter in the presence of god without any stain of sin we have to be so clean and this wedding garment of holiness is provided for us how is that through sacraments the sacraments is the medium god is kept for us to be holy and to be sanctified especially confession and the holy eucharist are you making use of these sacraments to be ready to enter into the wedding feast of god are you preparing yourself are you preparing yourself with holiness sanctity and righteousness to be part of the feast of the kingdom of god and as an afterthought for this uh, wedding feast parable let us look into the way people are ignoring the invitations the way people are ignoring the invitations the final line of the gospel passage today final verse said many are called which means all are called but only few are chosen the invitation is open the invitation is open for everybody but it is your responsibility to respond and let us look into the gospel and ask why in the whole world they rejected the invitation they say i have no time i am busy i am i have to look after a lot of things that i am busy with my business my field my works my dear friends in christ jesus these are the people who are getting lost in their lives now the question as you are in this holy mass is to ponder for you is ask yourself am i lost where am i you know if you go into a park you no know, maybe a very structured park or if you go into a very big building or into a very big complex of industrial estate or field things like that there will always be a map there will always be a map that shows the layout of the park or layout of the structure of the industrial estate or the amusement park and there is one important thing that says you are here and you have to know that if you do not know where you are you don't know where you have to proceed and the map clearly tells you you are here and you look at that map and say okay i am here so you can navigate through the path now as you are entering into the holy mass as we are sitting here listening to the gospel ask ourselves where am i in my life where am i in my life am i lost or is this where i should be am i in the right place in my life is this where i should be to to know where i am in the right place ask yourself did i ignore or reject any invitations from god did i reject any invitation from god we receive a lot of invitations from god if you are not in a state of holiness if you are not in a state of purity god will invite you for confession god will invite you for the holy mass you have to be part of his kingdom god is inviting you regularly come for the feast come to the holy mass are you rejecting that invitation if you are forgetting to do your prayers if you are forgetting to uh, do your family prayer your personal prayer that is the invitation that jesus is giving you come and sit with me for the prayer if you are forgetting your duties and responsibilities that is the invitation that jesus is giving you do your duty do your responsibilities take care, take care of your family take care of your kids do your daily chores be sincere and honest and hard working in your workplace be sincere with your studies your duties and your responsibilities are you supposed to study now and are you sitting in front of the tv you are in the wrong place are you supposed to be at home for the prayer and dinner and you are wasting your time in the bar or the pub you are in the wrong place 
Are you supposed to be with your family for the Sunday mass? And you are just wandering around with your friends, wasting your time. You are in the wrong place. Your family is going through a crisis and you are going through eating, drinking and making merry with your friends. You are in the wrong place. Your family expects you to be part of the family and you are just wasting your time. You are expected to work hard to build a career and you are just wasting your time with not being responsible. These are the moments we are rejecting our invitations. Ask ourselves, am I rejecting or ignoring any invitation? Like the people ignored the invitation that God has given them. Am I rejecting, avoiding, basically ignoring any invitation that God is giving you? He invites you day in and day out through scripture, through internal intuitions, through people, through mass, through sermons. The God is inviting you. And second thing, sometimes you ask, if I reach, if I go where God is calling me to go, what if it's not enough for me? Will I find satisfaction? Will I be happy? Will I find things that are enough for my life? And this is where St. Paul is telling us today, I have found the secret. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Through Christ Jesus, God will always provide for you what is needed for you. You are never left to be hungry. You are never left wanting and you never find any scarcity. God will always provide you with enough. God will always give you enough. Not too much, not too little. God will always give you God will always give you what is enough for you. St. Paul says, I have been through all kinds of life, through ups and downs, through poverty and through riches, through abundance and through tribulations. I've been, been persecuted and all those times. Now I found the secret. I do not have to worry. I just have to be where I am, in the right place and God will be there. You are not going to be alone. Where you go, God will be there. You receive the invitation, you go there, God will be there for you. God will always give you just enough for you. He will not leave you wanting or hungry or in poverty. Through Christ Jesus, my God shall supply all your needs from his abundance, from his riches in glory. You're always being provided for. The challenge before us is to join the wedding feast, to receive the invitation, to be part of the kingdom of God. Never to miss our confessions. Never to miss our holy mass. Part of the church through, uh, through making use of the sacraments. These sacraments are the invitations, the channels of God's grace by which you know you are in the right place at the right time. Ask ourselves, where am I? Am I in the right place? Am I in the right way of life? Have I chosen correctly? May the good Lord bless us all. Amen.